This is the first of a two-part series on SU8 lithography in the Macquarie University cleanroom. This video will cover the first layer and its exposure. Start with a strong plasma treatment. If the wafer is new, there is no need for other cleaning steps. Make sure the wafer is centered and on the correct platform. Here we will use a 5-minute oxygen plasma at 300 watts in our March PX250. There is a YouTube video about this instrument in the playlist. The plasma treatment is now almost done and you can see a glow from the chamber. Unload the wafer and take it to the fume hood, placing it on your 95 degree hot plate. Don't forget to seal the vacuum chamber and pump it down below 100 millitor when you're finished. Place the wafer onto the spinner. The wafer must be centered. To do this, rotate the stage while holding your head still and observing the far edge of the wafer. You can see the minimum radius point and then nudge the wafer toward that point. The photoresist that we're using here is very thick and the bottle is almost empty, so I'm holding it nearly vertical and this bit has been sped up. You want the puddle to be in the middle and to cover about one quarter of the wafer radius. Photoresist is very expensive, so it's worth trying to use just enough, though I've actually used a little more than necessary here. Programming the spinner is not obvious. There is a procedure posted above the fume hood. Once you think you've got the spinner settings right, test them on a blank substrate before loading your wafer. It takes some practice and skill to avoid getting the sticky photoresist on the threads of the bottle. The spin speed and time will come from the photoresist datasheet. SU8 resist should be spun with slow acceleration to help the puddle spread. The last digits of the resist type usually indicate how thick the film should be when spun at 30 seconds and 4000 RPMs. So 2025 is about 25 microns thick while 2100 is 100 microns thick. Spinning faster will make the film thinner and spinning slower will result in a thicker film. If your first coating isn't good enough, wash it off now with acetone then 2-propanol, then start again at the plasma clean. If it's okay, move the wafer to the 65 degree hot plate for the suggested time. Then move it to the 95 degree hot plate for the suggested time. If you're using foil covered hot plates, it's probably good to add 3 to 5 degrees to this set point to compensate. When you're finished with the spinner, you must clean it. Load a blank substrate and run your process while spraying acetone through the center hole onto the blank. Do not spray acetone near the rotating stage unless the air purge is on. The air purge prevents chemicals like acetone from contaminating the bearings. The acetone that you spray into the bowl and the excess photoresist will flow into a reservoir at the back. This must not be allowed to overflow and may need to be emptied by you. Rotate the spinner to get better access to the waste reservoir. Unthread it and dump it into the mixed solvent waste bottle. Rethread the reservoir and clean up any grips or stickiness. The next step is exposure, but the wafer must sit flat in the machine. Thick resists like SU8 often creep around the edge and get onto the back of the wafer during spinning. This residue must be cleaned. This will ensure that the wafer sits flat in the next machine and prevent it from getting dirty. Here I'm wiping the back of the wafer with an acetone soaked wipe. Load the wafer in the center of the Durham Magneto Optics ML3, then close and lock the lid. In the DMO software, the first window is Align Wafer. Under the Wafers tab in the top right, we define the substrate. Our substrate is a 76.2 mm or 3 inch circular wafer. We now need to help the machine focus on the surface. Enter the approximate wafer thickness in the text box, then turn on the optical checkerboard. Now use the mouse scroll wheel to move the substrate up and down and bring the checkerboard into focus. The checkerboard pattern is projected onto the substrate by the same microscope and digital mirror device that will create the exposure pattern. The software requires you to do an autofocus step. The button just below the wafer thickness box with a red triangle in it will start the autofocus procedure. If you have a thick film, 
a transparent substrate, like a glass slide, or a highly reflective film, you need to think carefully about which surface the microscope is actually focusing on, as it can focus on any reflective surface, including the top of the resist and the bottom of the glass slide. The next window, selected in the top left corner, is Prepare Pattern. We've already loaded some mask files and specified their locations. The red box shows a minimum rectangular bounding box for the pattern. A more in-depth introduction to the machine can be found on YouTube from the Stanford University Nanofab, and we can provide you with a copy of the manual. The final window is Expose. Here you set the dose energy, or resist sensitivity, in millijoules per square centimeter, and any focus correction. The focus correction is a distance above the surface where you want the pattern to be in focus. For SU8, it is good to set this at about 30 to 60% of the film thickness. Our film is about 50 microns thick, and we are trying to place the focal plane in the middle of this film. The machine will find the height of the substrate at three locations. Then use the tilt of this plane to stay in focus over the area to be exposed. It will choose these locations automatically based on the bounding boxes of the patterns. Since our red bounding boxes run off the wafer, we must specify locations that we know are on the wafer. If your red bounding box is entirely on the wafer, you can use the automatically generated positions. We have also found that it is more reliable to turn off the real-time focus correction by choosing None. Finally, we are ready to start the exposure. The displayed time remaining is only an estimate, and it can run significantly faster or slower. When it's finished, press the red button on the box and unload your wafer. In the next video, we'll add another layer of resist, expose that, and develop the two layers together.